Hello, so why do some paintings look flat and others look like the objects are about to pop out of the canvas because they're so alive? This was a question that had frustrated me before I started my professional training. I had my eureka moment when I realised I hadn't understood how light falls onto an object. And like with many things, when you find out how they do work, it's actually quite simple. So, to start with, the world needs to be divided into three tones. A dark tone, a mid-tone and a light tone. The lightest is where the sun is burning out the colour, so like in photography where something is overexposed. The mid-tone is where you find all the vibrant colours and the dark tone where the light isn't enough and is darkening the colour. So I challenge you to look at the world in three tones and to do that you need to half close your eyes so you're seeing things slightly blurry because you, you don't want the details to distract you and then Start dividing things into three and see what happens. I'm now going to show you how I use this process in the painting that I was working on in the last video. All I have on my palette is the burnt umber and titanium white, the darkest tone and the lightest tone, although it is rare to find pure white in nature. The background colour on the canvas is already a warm mid-tone and I've mixed a cooler grey mid-tone for the coffee maker simply because I'm exploring the metallic feel of it. Here I'm putting in the shadow shapes that the objects make on the table and then using the white titanium with a very small amount of the burnt umber because it won't be pure white to create the lightest part of the surface. The coffee cup now has its dark tone and mid tone. Now watch what happens when I put on the lightest tone and see how the cup becomes three dimensional. At this point in the painting I'm not concentrating on colour, I'm just using these three tones and at the same time, I'm still adjusting the shapes and forms of the objects. Now working on the portrait again, using the three tones only, you'll see me adjusting um, the shape of the portrait. It's too far to the left and I have to move it over to the right. And that is the beauty of oil paints, because you can just paint over them until you get what you're painting as you like it. And you can paint wet on wet paint, or you can leave it to dry and paint over it. This first layer of the painting is also known as the underpainting and it's been used for centuries by oil painters as a way of concentrating on where the light is in, your, in the painting. Also because you're not concentrating on mixing colours and looking at details you are also much freer to change the uh, objects, the position, the proportions and experiment with your composition. So I'm about to finish this part of the painting and I'm just going to put in the highlights on the bottle and again watch how it begins to become more three-dimensional. So now the objects are beginning to turn and to come out of the canvas you can see the difference to when it was more two-dimensional. In the next video I'll be adding colour 
and I will also be pushing the extremes of light and shade so that the painting becomes even more realistic. 